please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the 2019 mathematics questionnaire of the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government on max scholarships for the specialized training category. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. In this video, we will solve the first five questions of problem one. For problem one, we need to find the values of x that satisfy this inequality. First, we notice that this inequality means the following. It means that both x plus 3 is less than 4x and the negative of x plus 3 is less than 4x. So we have to look for the possible values that satisfy both of these two inequalities. First, let us look at the first inequality. x plus 3 is less than 4x. If we move the x to the other side by subtracting x on both sides, we obtain this. Now, we divide both sides by 3, we obtain this. And that means that x must be to the right of 1 on the number line. For the other inequality, we get negative of x plus 3 is less than 4x. We distribute the negative sign and we obtain this. Now we add x to both sides to remove this variable here and we obtain 5x on the other side. Now we divide both sides by 5 to obtain this expression. This says that x must be greater than or to the right of negative 3 fifths and therefore x must be both greater than 1 and greater than negative 3 fifths. If we draw that on the number line, this is negative 3 fifths and this is 1. For this expression here, this says that x must be to the right of 1. This expression here means that x must be to the right of negative 3 fifths. And the values of x that satisfy both conditions are only the values to the right of 1 here. And therefore, the answer is x should be greater than 1. For problem 2, we are told that the equation x plus y plus z has integer solutions for x, y, and z, and that these values of x, y, and z are all either positive or zero. So let us try to list down the possible values of x. For the possible values of x, we only have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. That is because if we go beyond 4, let's say 5, then 5 plus y plus z can never be 4 if y and z are all positive. And therefore, we are only, we are restricted to the values less than 5. We cannot have negative for x as well, because the problem states that the solutions are only zero or positive integers. And so the possible values for x are only zero, one, two, three, and four. If that is the case, then four minus x, if we move x to the other side, we are left here with y plus z. And because y and z are all positive integers or zero, then we can only have the possible combinations here. First, let us substitute zero for x. That means that four minus x is four and that y plus z should be four. That is again, moving x to the other side, we see that y plus z equals four minus x. So this column must be the same as this column. Now, what are the possible add-ins that form 4? It could be 0 plus 4, 1 plus 3, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 1, and 4 plus 0. All of these add to 4. And we are only using integers in 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And there are five possibilities here. 
so we write the count number here. Now for x equals 1, 4 minus x is 3. That means that y plus z must be 3. And the possible combinations of integers that add up to 3 are the following. 0 plus 3, 1 plus 2, 2 plus 1, and 3 plus 0. And if we count this, there are four of them. We make the same consideration for when x equals 2. In this case, y plus z must be 2. And the numbers that add up to 2, the positive or 0 numbers that add up to 2 are 0 plus 2, 1 plus 1, 2 plus 0. And there are three of these combinations. We do the same process for when x equals 3, for which we get two combinations. And finally, we do x equals 4. In that case, y plus z could only be 0. And so we get 0 plus 0, which is just one combination. We add them all together, 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 and we obtain 15 possible solutions. For problem 3, we are told that there is a circle with this equation, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And for this circle, we know that h is the x-coordinate of the center, k is the y-coordinate of the center, and r is the radius of the circle. We need to find h, k, and r, as given in the blanks here in 1, 2, and 3. Now we are also told that one of the diameters of this circle has endpoints 0, 0, the origin, and a, 6, 8. First, let us find the center of this circle. The center of the circle is the midpoint of any diameter of the circle. Because this is a diameter of the circle, we can obtain the center by getting the midpoint of this line segment OA. The midpoint is simply the average. So, for the x-coordinate of the midpoint, that is the x-coordinate of our center of the circle, which is H. And to obtain that, we get the average of 0 and 6. 0 plus 6 over 2 is 3. And therefore, this is the x-coordinate of our center. And that goes in here. For the y-coordinate of our center, k, we need to get the midpoint, the midpoint's y-coordinate. That is, we get the average of 0 and 8. And that is 0 plus 8 over 2, and we obtain 4. And therefore, this is the y-coordinate of the center of our circle, and that goes here. For the radius of the circle, we know that that is one-half the length of the diameter. So, we just need to obtain the length of this diameter and multiply it by one-half. So, for r, we have one-half times the length of the diameter. The length of the diameter can be obtained by the Pythagorean theorem, and that is 0 minus 6 squared plus 0 minus 8 squared. And if we simplify this expression, we obtain this. Ultimately, simplification leads us to 1 half times 10, which is 5, and therefore, here is k, or rather h, which is 3, here is k, which is 4, and here would be r, which is 5. For the fourth question, we need to convert this expression into a log base 2, this expression into a log base 3, and this expression into its simplified form. To do this, we need to recall this identity. 
the log of p base q is equal to the log of p, we put the p here, over the log of q, we put the q in here to here. And in this case, the base is another number, b. The only restrictions for this is that the b, p, and q must be positive numbers and that q and b the basis b q should not be 1 now let us look at the log of 9 base 4 using this we can convert the base into base 2 so we get log of 9 this goes here and the base is 2 so 2 and 4 goes here and again the base is 2 the base here and the base here must be the same, just like in here. And we can simplify the denominator by doing the following. We know that 4 is 2 squared, and therefore we can get this. Now, in the logarithms, the exponent can be taken out of the logarithm and becomes a factor like this. So the 2 here goes here and now we have log of 2 base 2 which is just 1 because 2 to the 1 equals 2 so this can be cancelled to 1 and we are left with this expression and now the logarithm has a denominator of 2 this means that it has a factor of 1 half and again the factor can be converted into the exponent of the number inside the logarithm and so one half goes here but nine to the one half is the same as the square root of nine which is just three and so we get that this number is equal to log of three base two and so the number here is three for log of four base nine we follow the same procedures Again, we use the base 3 because that is what we're looking for. So log of 4 base 3 over log of 9 base 3. Here 4 came from here, 9 came from here. Now we do a simplification again of the denominator. In this case, 9 is 3 squared. Again, the exponent can be factored out of the logarithm. And so we get this. Again, log of 3 base 3 is just 1. And so the denominator becomes 2. And just like in here, we can put this in the exponent of the number inside the logarithm symbol. And so we get this expression. 4 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 4, which is just 2. And therefore, the number that goes here is just 2. Finally, we need to compute the value of this expression. Log of 4, or rather log of 9 base 4, has been computed, and we know that it is equal to log of 3 base 2. So, we replace log of 9 base 4 with log of 3 base 2. We do the same for log of 4 base 9 which we already know to be log of 2 base 3. And so we replace this with this. We notice that this first term is the same as the second term, and this first term is the same as the second term. And so, for this part, we get 2 log of 3 base 2. And for this part, we get log of 2 base 3 times 2. The 2 and the 2 here can be factored out. And again, we use this identity to do the following. Log of 3 base 2 can be made into log of 3 over log of 2. The 3 here is here. The 2 here is here. And now we have base 10 or base e. That doesn't matter. This can also be converted into log of 2 over log of 3. Again, we apply this identity. The 2 here goes here. The 3 here goes here. And again, the bases do not even matter. 
Now we see that log of 3 here cancels with the log of 3 here. The log of 2 here cancels with the log of 2 here. And 2 times 2 equals 4. For problem 5, we need to simplify this expression. We know that the sixth root of 25 is the same as 25 to the 1 sixth. The third root of 25 is the same as 25 to the 1 third. And the square root of 5 is the same as 5 to the 1 half. And now we express 25 in terms of 5. That is just 5 squared. And so it becomes 5 raised to the 2 sixth. The squared, the exponent, 2 is multiplied by the exponent 1 sixth. The same is true here. The exponent 2, because it's 5 squared, is multiplied by the exponent 1 third, and we obtain 2 thirds. And now, from the loss of exponent, we add the exponents on the numerator and subtract the exponent in the denominator. In this case, 2 sixth is 1 third, 2 third is, one th is 2 thirds, so 1 third plus 2 thirds, and 1 half is 1 half in here. So we subtract 1 half. 1 third plus 2 third is just 1. And so 1 minus 1 half is 5 to the 1 half, which is just the same as the square root of 5. If you learned something new today, Please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!